and welcome to the closing ceremony for the fourth Just Transition Platform meeting. I'm Moem Zaidi and I'll be your host. Now, joining me virtually for this high-level roundtable will be represented from EU coal, heat, shale oil and carbon intensive regions across countries and regions such as Greece, France, Germany, Hungary, Italy, Finland, Poland, the Netherlands, Spain and the Czech Republic. Now, each of these regions is going to be showcasing their ideas, their ambitions for how they're going to transform their economies to become more sustainable. And it's my pleasure now to introduce to you all the Executive Vice President of the European Commission, Mr. Franz Timmons. Thank you for joining us and thank you, of course, for leading this roundtable. Right. Now, Mr. Oh, EVP Timmons, I should say, um, as you all are aware, leads the European Commission when it comes to the European Green Deal, so this meeting could not be in better hands. Now, over the next one and a half hours, we're going to be taking stock of the results of the fourth Just Transition Platform meeting. Now, for anyone who's joining us who isn't quite sure what exactly um, it is, the Just Transition Platform meeting was created only back in 2020 to leave no region and to leave no one behind in the transition to climate neutrality. This is, of course, one of the new and many tools to help realise the ambition of the EU Green Deal, which is to reduce CO2 emissions by at least 55% by 2030 and to become the world's first climate neutral bloc by 2050. So these are big goals, but they, of course, are achievable if we all do work together. Now, this meeting really couldn't be coming at any better time. Not only are we all becoming, as individuals, more aware of what we need to do to combat climate change, but at the recently concluded UN Climate Conference in Glasgow, so COP26, 18 coal-reliant countries made a commitment to phase down from unabated coal power and phase out inefficient fossil fuel subsidies. This was a historic first. But as we know, history, making history, isn't easy. Neither is moving towards sustainability, but at least we are making progress in that direction. So to understand what EU countries and their regions need and what they need to do, without further ado, let's get to our roundtable. But before we do, there are, of course, some house rules, and I'm going to tell you a bit about the format of this session. So I will give the floor to each regional speaker twice. Each speaker will then have an absolute maximum of three minutes to lay out their visions, their key messages for their regions on both occasions. Now, dear speakers, I do warn you that if you go above your time of three minutes, I will have to unfortunately cut you off, so please do stick to the allotted time. And roughly after every three speakers, I will then turn to the Executive Vice President and ask him for his input. And once we, of course, have done one round, we're then going to repeat the process once again, but this time I'm going to ask the regions how they aim to achieve economic success. So I hope that makes sense for everyone, and especially I hope um, for everyone joining us online, it gives you a sense of how this session is going to be. So, well, without further ado, let me now hand the floor to the EU Commission's Executive Vice President, Franz Timmons, for his keynote address. Thank you very much. And, um, you know, I was really looking forward to this exchange. Uh, we are now two years into the Green Deal. It was a lonely place to be two years ago with our Green Deal. It was a world's first. If I look back at the last couple of weeks, especially the conclusions also in COP, we're no longer alone. We have uh, the United States back in full force. Uh, and we have um, a range of countries who have now also moved in the same direction. A year ago, only 30% of the world's economy committed to carbon neutrality by the middle of the century. Today, 90% of the world's economy has committed to carbon neutrality, anywhere between 2040 and 2060. So I believe um, this is a global movement, and I also believe that the only way this global movement can be successful is if we have a plan to get there. And that's the European Green Deal and our Fit for 55 project. It will get us to at least a reduction of at least 55% of our emissions as compared to 1990 by 2030, and it will get us to climate neutrality by 2050. But we will only get there if we leave no one behind. And we still have 30 coal mining regions in Europe. We still have uh, regions 
uh, where the industry depends heavily on uh, uh, fossil fuels uh, in an excessive way. And we need to make sure that these regions also profit from the opportunities of this new economy. And for that, we need just transition. And just transition is at the heart of everything uh, we do. But just transition is a promise. And the promise is we will leave no one behind. The promise is also, and I say this as someone coming from a coal mining, that if we do this transition, the jobs and the economic opportunities should be coming to the region, to the people in the region. Because all too often in, in the past, in going into transition, the jobs went to other parts of a country. Uh, the economic growth went to the country as a whole. Uh, but very often, the region concerned was left behind. We can no longer afford to operate in that, in that way. So when we say just transition, we mean just transition of the region. We mean economic opportunity for the region. And we mean jobs for the people in that region. But since our regions are so different, even though the challenge is very often the same, I'm now very curious to hear from you, uh, from your different perspectives, where your priorities are and how we, we can be part of those priorities. And I also hope that you will listen to each other because I'm absolutely convinced that many of you will have brilliant ideas, but these are not necessarily the same ideas. Uh, so you can profit from each other's ideas and we collectively can show to the world that Europe can lead in this transition and that Europe can also see show that there is an economy post-transition that is vibrant, that has high quality jobs with decent salaries, and that leads to uh, us being able to profit from uh, the world that is coming. Thank you so much, Executive Vice President Franz Timmons. Okay, well, time now to go to our first round table and to our distinguished speakers. First of all, welcome to all of you uh, from myself and, of course, the Executive Vice President of the Commission, uh, Franz Timmons. A pleasure to have all of you with us, albeit virtually, of course. So, for the first round, the question is, what is your vision for a just transition in your region? How can the region's actions inspire others in their journey towards a just transition? And we'll go over to our first speaker, which is Barbara Botos, the Deputy State Secretary in charge of Just Transition in Hungary. Now, Hungary is setting the standard for Eastern European countries. Uh, its last coal power plant will be shut down, I believe, by 2025. And it aims to reach 90% carbon uh, neutral electricity generation by 2030. Barbara Botos, three minutes, please go ahead. Thank you so much, um, Madam Chair and uh, Mr. Vice President. Yes, we intend to have coal phase out by 2030, and we could do that by 2060 if all financial resources are available. So that's the official standpoint. So let me just talk about uh, your question. So what the vision for just transition means in our region. So securing just transition is very crucial for Hungary. Why? because we have prepared three just transitional plans for the three most affected Hungarian counties in the context of the transition of climate neutrality. Baranya County, which is in the south, this is a carbon intensive region dependent on construction cement industry, along with high levels of energy poverty. Its region has a long history of unprepared transition when the collapse of the mining activity in the 1990s happened and it left tens of thousands unemployed and the industrial structure hasn't recovered since. For the other two counties in the Northeast, for Heves and Borsodov Zemplin counties, which are home to the last lignite uh, uh, power plant and its large open cast lignite mines that are to be closed with serious future implications on economy, employment and residential heating, which is based on lignite. And although these regions differ in their special needs, our vision is similar for them. We need to prepare workers for the challenges of the transition, promote green economic diversification and technological change and provide sustainable solution for residential heating needs. By learning from the past, from the, uh, from the not good practices and preparing for a transition in time, being really focused on the needs of our regions, that's how we can secure that this transition will be a just one. 
We have informally uh, submitted all the three um, just transition plans to the Commission and waiting for timely feedback to start implementing the just transition in our region. Uh, and today, during the other questions as well, I would like to focus on the Matra, Matra core regions where two of the three just transition plan uh, regions can be found. Why? Because its lignite power plant is the second largest power plant with installed capacity in the country after the nuclear power plant. And this is a major of major importance for security of supply. It accounts uh, of domestic electricity production of at least 50% of it. And the company is one of the largest employers in the region with 2,100 people working at the plant and in the open cost mines and a further 5,000 in companies closely linked to the lignite sector. And this is where I'm going to stop to keep my three minutes. Thank you for the, your attention. Thank you so much. You were actually under three minutes, so well done on that. Okay, over to our second speaker. We have Zdenek Karasik, the deputy for Just Transition in Moravian Silijon in the Czech Republic. I hope I pronounced that your region correctly. Um, now, your region has been in the process of transformation since the 1990s. You have 200 years of coal exploitation coming to an end, I believe, by 2038. You have three minutes. Please take the floor. Thank you. Thank you. Good, good afternoon. Uh, speaking about our vision for transition, I can use uh, the slogan which we which we use, and it is uh, new energy to change the region from coal mining to data mining. And uh, some explanation for this. As you mentioned, uh, we have 200 years of history of coal and steel region. And our transform transformation started in 1990. Uh, and the last coal mine won't be closed in the 2038. It is the uh, year for the whole Czech Republic. Uh, but in our region, the last coal mine uh, will be closed next year. Uh, it means that we are just in the, uh, let's say, in the center of ending uh, 200 years history of, uh, of coal mining. Um, I can say that uh, we are also in the last, uh, last uh, 10 years of uh, transformation, which should be finished by 2030. And it means that the Just Transition uh, Initiative is uh, just in time for our region. Uh, with regard to some evidence, uh, in 1990 uh, there were about 150,000 of employees in coal sector. Now we have less than 8,000 jobs in coal sector and more than 10,000 jobs in IT sector. And that is the reason why we say that we are in the process from coal mining to data mining. With regard to our uh, let's say super priorities concerning the transition. We there are three of them. Uh, the first one is uh, about people uh, equipped uh, with competencies for life and work in 21st century, uh, and we prepared uh, two projects, uh, two transformation projects to uh, support this initiative. The second uh, uh, building blocks uh, or super priority for us is uh, business. Uh, driven by innovation and our smart specialization. And I can mention that uh, these domains of, of specialization are new energy, including hydrogen. It is uh, also about automation and robotics. Uh, the third one is uh, digitization, including high performance computing and artificial intelligence. Uh, fourth one is about new materials and green technologies. Uh, the fifth one is health and fitness. And the last but not least is about creative and cultural sectors. So these are our uh, future or current domain of specialization. And the third uh, priority is about environment, uh, which means complex reborn of uh, post mining landscape. Uh, we have already prepared a master plan for this redevelopment. We have several uh, transformation projects and uh, in the in this year we also succeeded in uh, a European Commission uh, program LIFE. Uh, so we received uh, a specific LIFE uh, funding uh, 
for uh, preparation for climate change. And this is a project uh, done in cooperation with our Polish colleague in Silesia. For it is so it, one of the uh, priorities of us is also about cooperation with Polish Silesia. That's all. We had a little um, extra voice there. <laughs> But you did wrap up, so thank you so much, uh, Mr. Karasek. Okay, so over to our third speaker, Mr. Risto Uti Ainen, the Deputy Region Mayor for the Regional Council of North Karelia in Finland. And North Karelia hopes to transform itself into a region free from fossil fuel oil that is self-sufficient in renewable energy production. Please go ahead, you have three minutes. Please take the floor. Yes, thank you, and thank you also to, for the opportunity to take attend this uh, roundtable and come from the east part of the Finland, uh, bordering the Raso called North Karelia. So, in our uh, vision is briefly said, said that our region will be climate sustainable by 2030, and we made our own first program. It's 2014, and and new one is accepted this year. And we use the words climate-wise activities or, or climate-wise manners. And, and Finnish national goal is to be carbon neutral by 2035. So I, our aim in, in North Karelia is to be forerunner even in this Finnish context. So as was said, a uh, bit is our issue in, in Finland and our regional goal in phase out of bit for energy use is by 2030, how we do it. And what are the priorities of this transition process? So they are not one solution. First of all, economic diversification and modernization, reskilling and upskilling, R&D activities to develop new ways to substitute peat in greenhouses and agriculture, restoring peatlands used for energy, and also to develop other economic and climate-wise uses of those peatlands. And finally, how to inspire other regions in their journey. So think smart, use your smart specialization processes, activate young people and local actors. These attraction and attraction activities are essential for the future. And it's not always the easiest one, face the transition in a positive way and see possibilities and uh, to get solutions. Thank you very much. to Georgios Kassipides, the governor of Western Macedonia in Greece. Thank you for joining us. Um, so Western Macedonia's economy is largely dominated by lignite, so brown coal mining. Greek government vows to close those plants by 2025. Georgios Kassipides, you have three minutes. Please go ahead. Mr. Kasapides, you will have to unmute yourself, please. Thank you. Yes, it's okay. Perfect, we can hear you. Please go ahead, Ms. Kasapides. Thank okay, you for three minutes. Thank you. thank you very much. Hello from Greece. Uh, my region, Western Macedonia, goes until uh, 2019, the energy heart of Greece. 50 years of uh, lignite exploitation have led to air and soil pollution and have had uh, a big impact on public health. At the same time, up to 20,000 jobs, uh, direct and uh, indirect, were created by this production. First and foremost, the just transition for Western Macedonia means uh, the as immediate as possible creation of the number of jobs lost due to decarbonization. The new production and uh, development model must focus on energy and green technologies. Renewable energy source uh, installed with a plan and uh, in harmony with the environment, hydrogen production as a fuel and for energy storage energy efficiency buildings are a few practices pursued by us. Rural development with zero 
CO2 emissions, uh, fingerprint products uh, is also part of my vision. As a society, we must take a turn towards the agriculture and live, livestock sector, and especially to the green agriculture, in order, in order to have a successful uh, fight against uh, the climate change. Nowadays, uh, with global food crisis, this is more obvious than ever. A high-tech region where technology, innovation and uh, research and uh, development uh, thrive is a personal goal of mine. We want to create uh, an interaction between our university and uh, the business world so to have more tech and R&D companies located in Western Macedonia making the best use of our human resource and the scientists and uh, as a result uh, reversing the brain drain to brain gain. We see to the transition as an uh, opportunity to become more functional and uh, example of efficiency, e-governance and uh, accessibility to our people. We want to, beco to become the greenest region in Europe. Our actions uh, can show the way to a more sustainable and green future and to a complete uh, transformation of a whole region from a lignite-based economy to a tech and green technology energy role model. If or better when we succeed, more regions could be encouraged to dare such a huge transition. For the transition to be just, your help is indispensable. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you so much. And thank you to our opening um, for uh, invitees. Okay, so Executive Vice President Timmons, you heard there from Greece, Hungarian, Czech and Finnish regions. They've spoken about reskilling the workforce, um, some have mentioned AI, robotics, learning from the past, preparing their workforce. What have you made so far? Well, first of all, what they all have in common is incredible ambition. Uh, and that's uh, an excellent uh, point to start with. Uh, secondly, what they don't have in common is the phase in which they are. So, this is a challenge for all of us at the European scale to address transition in the different phases uh, where our coal mining regions and other reg regions are. Um, the third comment would be that most of the regions have comparable ambitions as to where they see the opportunities of the new economy. And I find that striking, um, but I also find it um, um, surprising that none of you would uh, point, as far as I, if I uh, listen to you correctly, to industrial opportunities in uh, uh, other than um, uh, in new energy, digitization, robotics. Uh, um, for instance, um, the new mobility will lead to huge opportunities uh, for um, uh, zero emission cars. Uh, I think coal mining regions, uh, especially if uh, some of the components of batteries or other components would be uh, available in that region, could be part of such an industrial development. Um, what I do see as something uh, you have clearly indicated is new energy. And, and I have, um, uh, I think hydrogen is an incredible potential uh, for, for the European economy because we will need hydrogen for difficult to abate sectors, for mobility, um, on road, but especially shipping and aviation, and as a, a storage facility for renewable energy. I would, be, because coal mining regions have a huge experience with logistics, uh, physical infrastructure, uh, transportation. Um, you know, in in the uh, in the new energy uh, world, we will need enormous grids, new grids, uh, digitized grids, smart grids, but we will also need batteries, big batteries, uh, for storing of renewable energy, and hydrogen for storing it and then getting it to the place where it needs to be. And I would assume that many of your regions have already uh, an advanced potential in terms of that infrastructure and in terms of those logistics. Just a few comments on the basis of what you uh, uh, have said. Vice President, um, and let's see if the other regions 
those plans for industrial speak about. Okay. So over to our fifth speaker, we have Yzebran Riesebol, the Vice Governor of the province of Groningen in the Netherlands. Now, the Netherlands has a near total dependence, 92%, I believe, on gas and heat. Um, so the rising outcry of the danger of earthquakes from Groningen sealed the decision to end gas extraction by 2022. Mr. Yzebran uh, Riesebol, please take the floor. You also have three minutes. Thank you very much. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Good afternoon, Vice President of the European Commission. I am very happy to tell you today the story of Groningen and our region, the Northern Netherlands. My region, Groningen, is the main target region in the Netherlands for the Just Transition Fund. I hope I can inspire you and you can inspire us. I will give you a short introduction of our region so you will better understand who we are and where we are coming from. Groningen is a border region in the periphery of the Netherlands. As a gas mining region, we largely depend for jobs on the energy and the industrial sector. But the gas mining causes both earthquakes and greenhouse gas emissions. The latter as well by the gas mining, but also because a lot of industrial sites are in this region. Gas mining is no longer considered safe and sustainable. Our national government has decided to close the gas mining in Groningen down by 2022. Although we are happy with this decision. By the way, only this week, we again had an earthquake on 3.2 on the Richter scale. But this decision gives us a big socio-economic challenge. This comes on top on the social economic task our region already has. It means that the current industry faces a transition to alternative energy sources on a short time. Around 20,000 employees who are currently employed related to the energy sector and threatened with job loss or change of skills and activities. Most of all, it gives us extra urgency in accelerating the transition and improving our broad prosperity. I'll tell you now about our vision. Above all, we approach the transition as a possibility to a better future. For our workers, for our business, and for our citizens. For the future of the generations. Cleaner safer and more secure. Our mission is to become a strong and contributing region in the center of Northwestern Europe. In short, our just transition plan contains three parts. Firstly, we will strengthen our regional economy by stimulating new economic activities and developing our knowledge infrastructure. We will stimulate innovations within and across sectors. Secondly, we will reduce greenhouse gas emission and relay less on fossil raw materials. We will help businesses to switch to green raw materials. We will support new and green value chains making use of renewable energy. Thirdly, we will develop a strong and inclusive workforce. We stimulate lifelong education and development. And we stimulate social innovation, especially for the part of the population that needs it the most. The Northern Netherlands are an ideal testbed for all areas of energy transition. Green value chains, renewable energy, and improving broad prosperity. I hope we can inspire our regions with the opportunities we see and our learning experience. Learning from each other 
practices will help us exploring interesting opportunities. The last. Okay, thank you, Mr. Reservoir. I'm going to have to cut you off because you are going over your time. Okay, so now we go on to our next speaker, uh, Mr. Michele Emiliano, the president of Puglia region in Italy. Now, Italy's Prime Minister Mario Draghi has insisted that tackling climate change is central to his country's yeah, economic yeah. growth. But what's Puglia's contribution? Uh, Mr. Michele Emiliano, you have three minutes. Saluto, saluto tutti e tutte con grande affetto e con gratitudine per quello che l'Unione Europea sta facendo per noi. Eh, la Puglia è un caso contemporaneamente molto grave ma anche straordinariamente interessante per la transizione giusta perché ospitiamo i due impianti industriali che emettono più CO2 e più sostanze inquinanti d'Italia. La più grande acciaieria d'Europa a Taranto e una delle più grandi centrali a carbone eh, d'Italia a Brindisi. Bruciamo ogni anno circa 6 milioni di tonnellate di eh, carbone e i dati sanitari sono molto molto preoccupanti. Ci sono anche processi penali di disastro ambientale e di avvelenamento di sostanze alimentari presso le corti d'assise. Le corti d'assise in Italia sono i giudici che giudicano i reati di omicidio, di strage, i reati più gravi. Quindi è una situazione di gravità straordinaria. Ma grazie al JTF noi potremmo convertire all'utilizzo con tecnologie diverse, mantenendo l'occupazione che come voi vedete nella slide è elevatissima. Ci sono 18, più di 18.000 lavoratori che sono implicati in questo processo, noi potremmo restituire salute ai nostri eh, cittadini, dare al nostro sistema industriale una competitività che deriva dall'abbassamento del, delle emissioni e dell'impatto ambientale e costituire un esempio per tutta l'Europa, ma direi per tutto il mondo, delle modalità di produzione dell'acciaio del quale evidentemente non solo non possiamo fare a meno ma non vogliamo fare a meno eh, con modalità eh, meno inquinanti con una transizione che comincia attraverso l'utilizzo di forni elettrici a gas ma eh, traguardando nel prossimo decennio eh, Taranto soprattutto come luogo dove il Politecnico di Bari uno dei tre Politecnici eh, italiani possa progettare assieme all'Unione Europea, assieme all'Italia il polo nazionale dell'idrogeno. Siamo la regione che produce più energia eh, eolica e fotovoltaica in Italia. Abbiamo tutto in regola per produrre nei prossimi anni l'idrogeno che può servire a sostituire il gas nella gestione di questa gigantesca acciaieria che, eh, ripeto, eh, è strategica per il nostro paese, ma e questo è il punto di debolezza, il governo italiano non riesce ancora a definire il destino di questa fabbrica e le modalità tecnologiche di gestione nonostante sia rientrato, entrato di nuovo, nuovamente nella proprietà di questa fabbrica. Quindi noi siamo a disposizione della Commissione europea per esercitare nel limite del, dei nostri poteri costituzionali tutta la pressione possibile sul governo italiano perché definisca Uh, il futuro di questa fabbrica e uh, sia coerente uh, sotto questo aspetto con gli impegni internazionali. È inutile dire che il ringraziamento che ho fatto all'inizio non è formale. Senza il contributo uh, dell'Unione Europea, della Commissione Ambiente, della Commissione Crescita e oggi uh, del Vicepresidente Timmermans, le nostre speranze di una transizione giusta a Taranto sarebbero molto più piccole. Noi continuiamo a lottare assieme a tutta l'umanità per un futuro diverso e Taranto è la prova che l'Unione Europea fa sul serio, che l'Italia fa sul serio. Grazie. Ok, thank you so much Mr. Emiliano there. I'm sure uh, the executive vice president um, really appreciated um, those thoughts. Ok, so over to our seventh speaker. We have Daniel Lecca, the vice president in charge of European affairs at the Haute de France in France, uh, the third industrial revolution in Autre France based on energy transition and digital technologies aims at changing behaviors and transforming the economy. Uh, Daniel Lecker, you have three minutes. Please go ahead. 
Oui, tout à fait. Merci, euh, merci de nous donner l'occasion de, de mettre en lumière les initiatives que nous, que nous engageons pour favoriser cette transition juste appelée de ses voeux par la Commission européenne. Je veux dire naturellement que la région des Hauts-de-France est, est un territoire Général, de manière parfois plus dure pour l'ensemble des territoires de notre région des, des Hauts-de-France. Alors c'est vrai que nous avons du coup euh, travaillé sur l'ensemble des fronts, une mutation industrielle, une mutation sociale avec de la formation, de l'accompagnement des populations vers ces nouveaux métiers et euh, le commissaire européen nous a montré qu'il pouvait y avoir des opportunités économiques vers une diversification de notre économie, c'est ce que nous avons voulu faire et c'est la raison pour laquelle dans notre stratégie de spécialisation nous avons insisté sur les filières les plus impactées par ce changement de modèle, au regard notamment de leur inscription territoriale et de l'ensemble des conséquences qu'ils pouvaient avoir sur notre, notre économie régionale. Et en résumé, aujourd'hui, notre vision de la transition juste, c'est d'accompagner l'ensemble des secteurs économiques, l'ensemble des territoires de la région de Haute-France et toutes les populations qui vont être demain impactées, afin que notre économie soit plus résiliente et en capacité de, de résister aux différents euh, aléas que nous avons pu connaître, et je crois que sur ce point de vue, nous sommes bien engagés dans cette mutation. Alors, vous dire que nous avons évidemment des opportunités à saisir dans notre région, avec une euh, économie euh, très forte en matière notamment de mobilité, donc dans lesquelles nous savons qu'il y a des opportunités à tirer. Nous avons la chance d'avoir aussi un historique très fort de dialogue social dans notre région, et on sait que ce dialogue va être important pour accompagner les populations et pour ne laisser personne au bord du chemin. Nous avons aussi un tissu... Euh, économique avec des formations de pointe, à, 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 à dire une, une population formée et mobile en capacité d'accompagner de, 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 cette transition économique. Et puis enfin, euh, un travail de territoire avec la valorisation des circuits courts, avec une répartition équitable euh, sur l'ensemble du territoire régional. Donc vous voyez que la transition juste, permise notamment par l'intermédiaire de la Commission européenne et de l'initiative que vous avez lancée, trouve en région Hauts-de-France une application très concrète et, je l'espère, la plus efficace possible. Okay, thank you so much, Mr. Lecker. Okay, well, back to our executive vice president now. Um, so, did you hear those concrete plans and ambitions that you were looking for? Yes, I did. And 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 if if I want to um, mention a a common issue here for the three regions uh, we have just heard, it's the workforce. So how do you skill and reskill the workforce so that the jobs come to the region? Now, we are in a unique position in European history, that even though in some parts of Europe uh, unemployment is still relatively high, our demographic situation uh, dictates that we will need every single European to have the skills to fill jobs if we want our economic activity to stay high, If we want industry to stay and to innovate, um, we need to be able to fill the jobs. Uh, we're not even able to fill the jobs in many areas now. Not because we don't have the people, but the people we have don't have the skills they need. So I think one of the biggest challenges we will be facing, and this particularly affects the Just Transition region, is to give our people the skills they need to fill the jobs of the future. This, I believe, should be addressed in very close cooperation between the European level, the national level, and the regional and local level. Uh, and with the incorporation of the in in interested industrial players, sectors in the economy, 
um, uh, so in a triple helix approach, you have the governments at all levels, you have all the educational facilities at all levels, and you have the private sector involved at all levels, not just the big players, but also small and medium-sized enterprises. Only if all of this works together will we be able to give people the skills they need to fill all these jobs. Now, that's easy, in to relatively easy, in tourism, in the services industry, etc. But that's much harder if you want to attract high-tech industry, if you want to attract um, hydrogen-based economic activity, if you want to uh, uh, go uh, uh, from uh, uh, um, coal mining to data mining. You know, these are very specific skills that people need to be able to acquire. And I think this is a common uh, challenge for, for all regions. And we at the European Commission really very much want to be part of the development of plans that would address those challenges uh, in your different regions. And I'm really very much keen to be part of that. Final comment, because it's a very specific issue. Taranto, for me, is also, I, I made it very personal. I said, for me, Taranto is one of those examples where we need to prove that we can make green steel in Europe. Um, so, uh, if we can find uh, a way of producing steel with green hydrogen, that means that you offer jobs, that you continue to produce steel, but that you put an end to the terrible, terrible, environmental problem that is caused by the present way of producing steel in Taranto. So uh, we have several places in Europe where this is the case, but Taranto is a very explicit example of uh, what needs to be done. And just to be clear, the Italian government is very much on this page, so I hope we can continue our intensive cooperation on uh, that issue. Final comment. With all this we need to do for the workforce, we need to make sure we have uh, social partners fully involved. So trade unions are indispensable in all of this transition. Uh, in this triple helix that I, I mentioned, the trade union should have a pivotal role. Okay, over to our eighth speaker, from the plenipotentiary of the board of the Wheel Polska region in Poland. Now, Eastern Wheel Polska, the major Polish lignite brown coal mining region, and has two coal-fired power stations. The mines and plants employ around 4,000 people, and its goal is to end the use of coal in the energy and heating sectors by 20. Matt J. Citek, you have three minutes. Please go ahead. Dziękuję bardzo. Witam Państwa serdecznie. To, co jest niezwykle istotne, jeżeli chodzi o transformację Wielkopolski Wschodniej, w ogóle Wielkopolski, to przede wszystkim bardzo jasno wyznaczone cele. 2030 odejście od spalania węgla i wydobywania węgla w energetyce i ciepłownictwie, a w 2040 osiągnięcie neutralności klimatycznej. Być może, tak jak moi przedmówcy mówili, Niektóre kraje mają dużo bardziej ambitne plany, natomiast my w Polsce wydaje się, że Wielkopolska jest tutaj jednym z takich, takich regionów, które jak gdyby nadają ton właśnie transformacji, jeżeli chodzi o, o Polskę. To, co jest istotne i to, co my uważamy za najistotniejsze, jeżeli chodzi o regiony węglowe, to nie tylko stworzenie nowych miejsc pracy, czy przejście z energetyki klasycznej w energetykę odnawialną, ale przede wszystkim zbudowanie nowej tożsamości regionu. Uważamy, że to, że mieszkańcy zaczną utożsamiać się ze zmianą, którą chcemy wprowadzić, będzie najważniejsze. Mieszkańcy nie tylko, czy górnicy nie tylko e, e, zarabiają pieniądze, ale także dumni są ze swojego regionu. To, co myśmy stworzyli, to Wielkopolska Dolina Energii, która oparta jest właśnie dwa cele podsta podstawowe, 2030 e, zaprzestanie wydobywania węgla i 2040 e, e, neutralność klimatyczna, ale przede wszystkim to, co w naszym przypadku jest istotne, 
to to, że mamy jasno określone jak gdyby inteligentne specjalizacje, w których chcemy realizować te nasze cele. Po pierwsze technologie odnawialne źródła energii to jest jak gdyby jedna z inteligentnych specjalizacji Wielkopolski Wschodniej. Druga taka ważna to jest elektromobilność w takim wydaniu produkcji ewentualnie baterii do, do samochodów, tworzenia miejsc pracy właśnie w tych nowoczesnych przemysłach i trzecia to technologie wodorowe. Ale, ale oczywiście to nie, nie, nie wystarczy, żebyśmy osiągnęli neutralność klimatyczną. Nasz cel, jeżeli chodzi o Wielkopolskę Wschodnią, to do 2030 roku zmniejszyć emisyjność CO2 od 90-95%, redukcję emisji gazów cieplarnianych o 55%, czy zwiększenie udziału OZE o 32%. I to są jak gdyby cele, które chcemy osiągnąć. Natomiast pozostałe 5 lub 10%, które chcemy osiągnąć i chcemy zredukować w taki sposób, żeby osiągnąć neutralność klimatyczną, chcemy to zmienić w transporcie, w logistyce i w głębokiej termomodernizacji. Mamy około 90 tysięcy budynków, które musimy zdermomodernizować w Wielkopolsce Wschodniej. Mamy bardzo ambitne plany, także mam nadzieję, że, że je zrealizujemy. Okay, thank you. Those were some very good plans to hear. Okay, so to our ninth speaker, to Thomas Gottfried Schmidt, the Minister for Regional Development and the Free State of Saxony in Germany. Now, I'll give you three minutes, so please go ahead. Ja, vielen Dank für die Möglichkeit, heute hier zu sprechen zu können. Ich möchte einen ersten Teil auf die Vision, wie die Frage ja war, eingehen und dann bei der zweiten Frage nochmal auf die konkreten Stärken, die wir haben. Die Lausitz muss ich definieren. Das ist eine von unseren beiden Kohleregionen als eine europäische Modellregion für den Strukturwandel, als eine Zukunftsregion. Theoretisch könnte man sagen, die Lausitz liegt am äußersten Rand Deutschlands, am äußersten Rand Sachsens, auch am äußersten Rand Brandenburgs. Aber auf europäisch gesehen liegt sie im Herzen Europas grenzt an äh, die äh, polnische äh, Republik, genauso wie an die tschechische Republik im Umkreis von zwei Stunden, zweieinhalb Stunden liegen die wirtschaftlich starken Zentren von Berlin, Ma Leipzig und Dresden in Deutschland, genauso wie Wroclaw in der Republik Polen und äh, Prag in der tschechischen äh, Republik. Und deshalb ist unser Ansinnen, unser Ziel, es wirklich europäisch diesen Übergang zu denken und das setzt als erstes bei einer äh, erfolgreichen Zusammenarbeit auf kommunaler Ebene an, auf Bundesländerebene in Deutschland an. Wir werden auch einen Vertrag abschließen äh, mit äh, unserem Nachbarland, mit Brandenburg, äh, um diese Zusammenarbeit zu verstetigen, aber auch über die Grenzen der Mitgliedstaaten hinweg. Diesen dran, europäisches Denken beim Transformationsprozess äh, ist meines Erachtens sogar ein Baustein, ein Mosaikstein für überhaupt eine erfolgreiche europäische Zusammenarbeit. Und die Kontakte <lacht> zu unseren Nachbarn in Polen und Tschechien sind hervorragend. Und wir sind auch beeindruckt, äh, wie unsere Nachbarländer, ich war jetzt gerade wieder äh, in Polen, auch diese Prozesse ganz zielgerichtet angehen. Wir können also gemeinsam voneinander lernen, die lokalen und regionalen grenzüberschreitende Zusammenarbeit festigen und hier gemeinsam diese Ziele des Klimawandels, der grünen Transformation angehen und am Ende erfolgreich auch gestalten. Gemeinsame Wege heißt natürlich auch Hemmnisse beseitigen. Okay, Ein Punkt ganz zum Schluss okay, möchte ich noch nennen. Buenos días a todos y a todas desde Asturias, en el norte de España. Muchas gracias por esta invitación a participar en, este, en esta discusión tan relevante para, para nuestras regiones. 
Asturias ha pasado de ser una región con una importante actividad de minería de carbón y también de generación de energía eléctrica a partir de centrales térmicas a ser una región en la que ya no hay prácticamente actividad extractiva de carbón y en la que las centrales térmicas bien han sido cerradas o bien tienen todas ellas planes concretos de cierre o de transformación. Es decir, para nosotros, para Asturias, la transición no está en nuestro futuro cercano, sino en nuestro presente, en nuestro día a día. Y esto viene siendo así ya desde el año 2018. Y desde luego creo que esta es una situación que la Comisión Europea debe tener en cuenta, debe prestarse, entendemos, una consideración especial a los estados y las regiones que estamos eh, muy avanzados en este proceso. Las regiones con una transición más acelerada deben recibir a nuestro oficio mayor apoyo en este momento, pues otras dispondrán de un periodo de tiempo mayor para recibir estos apoyos e inversiones institucionales. Con las aportaciones de todos los sectores implicados, como fruto del diálogo social, hemos definido nuestra estrategia de transición justa para que hasta el año 2030 se creen aproximadamente 6.300 nuevos empleos y se movilice una inversión total de cercana a los 6.500 millones de euros. Un solo elemento de nuestra visión sobre la transición justa es el de la diversificación de nuestra economía. Estamos pasando ya de un modelo industrial basado en el carbono a un modelo económico que parte de diversas fuentes de energía, así como de una mayor variedad de sectores, y en el que es fundamental la digitalización. Y para que esta transición justa sea un éxito, ya hemos establecido la arquitectura institucional mediante la creación de un comité asesor de fondos europeos en el que participan todos los principales actores y agentes de la región y una oficina de proyectos europeos cuyo principal cometido es el análisis de los proyectos empresariales nuevos. Creo que nuestras acciones en materia de transición justa, que pueden ser más inspiradoras para otras regiones, son precisamente nuestra apuesta por el diálogo social y la colaboración público-privada, por una parte, y por otra, nuestra firme apuesta por la transición como proceso ya del presente y no de un futuro próximo. Nada más y muchísimas gracias. Thank you very much. Okay, um, well that closes the first roundtable. And I go back to the Executive Vice President, um, Franz Timmermans. So we've heard from all the regions now. Um, before you answer about what you've just heard, at COP26, um you said that you don't want to leave a world behind where your grandchild your one-year-old grandchild and um, will have no food or water so perhaps about three years ago before this pandemic before brexit before fuel shortages that might have seemed like political theater on your behalf but right now we're actually living through actual crises so have you heard enough from these regions have they been ambitious enough are they up to Well, I honestly believe if we don't change our ways, and I feel backed up by science, if you look at the latest IPCC report, that we would have such shortages of water and food that our children would be fighting over it. Uh, the, the parts of the, our planet will become inhabitable. Uh, we were just uh, uh, listening to a representative of Asturias. Parts of Spain will become desert uh, if we don't change our ways. Uh, but it's no need for this to happen. We have the solutions. We only need to uh, speed up the implementation of the solution. And for that, just transition, I think, is, is essential. Um, and then, you know, if, if, if I move to some of the comments that were, were just made, um, one of the areas that is particularly difficult at this stage in terms of energy consumption is the built environment. And one of the huge economic opportunities I see is investing in improving um, the energy consumption uh, in reducing rather the energy consumption of our built environment. That will lead to a renovation wave. That will lead to huge amounts of jobs in all regions uh, to make sure we adapt uh, buildings. And let's start with schools and hospitals and, and of official buildings. Let's support our citizens so that they can increase the energy efficiency of their buildings. I think this is an incredible opportunity. And in parts of Europe, this is about heating. In other parts of Europe, it's mostly going to be about cooling. But the, the, the subject is exactly the same, energy uh, efficiency. Now, the issue uh, from, uh, if you look at Lausitz, uh, 
of um, uh, trans-border cooperation, your, your regional cooperation. I was actually personally a bit disappointed if we stimulated all the member states when they submitted their uh, uh, recovery and resilience plans uh, to pay particular attention to uh, um, uh, cooperation across the borders in regions of Europe. And it turned out to be extremely difficult to get member states to cooperate with other member states in that development. So I hope that um, this example from Germany can help us find concrete examples. And we at the Commission would love to support, especially those trans-regional uh, uh, cooperations that go across borders. Uh, I think, um, you know, I would uh, really ask you to stimulate the possibility uh, uh, to do that. And final comment I would like uh, to make. Uh, Jelka Polska and Asturias have already gone through quite a number of uh, um, uh, changes. Uh, Jelka Polska is, is very ambitious. I, I, I know this. And I can un have some understanding for a region like Asturias that said, look, we already went through a lot of transition without just transition funds. We did it ourselves. We did it in other ways. We want some recognition for that. I think regions who've done that deserve recognition for that, deserve support in complementing uh, this uh, transition. The one thing I want to add, though, which, which uh, uh, was also said, let's make sure we do this in a way that we help the economy to diversify, do not have economic monocultures in these regions. If you diversify your, your economy, you can, you can also react in times of crisis better. Uh, because then, uh, uh, you know, the, the, the downturn in one uh, sector can be uh, accommodated with the upturn in another sector and vice versa. So I think diversification, economic diversification, will become one of the hallmarks of what we need to do in just transition. Let me stop you. OK, well, time now to go to our second roundtable and back to our regional speakers. So roughly just remind you all that after three speakers, I will ask these experts for his thoughts. Now, the question for all of you this time around is what are the challenges and the assets in your region to promote economic renewal and make just transition a success? To all of you, I'll say this. We are running out of time, so I'm only going to give you two minutes. So please do hurry up and try to wrap up. OK, first of all, to Georgios Kesipides, the governor of Western Macedonia in Greece, you have two minutes. The, the region of uh, West Macedonia is one of the poorest regions of Greece with the highest levels of unemployment of uh, young people in Europe and a uh, grave demographic problem. And all this before the decision of our Prime Minister, Mr. Mitsotakis, for Greece call phase out by 2025, which is actually happening much earlier by 2023. Up to uh, 20,000 jobs were created around uh, the lignite exploitation in the region making the PPC the most important employer. One job in the lignite industry created uh, 3.2 jobs uh, on the local labor market. Our dependency on lignite is up to 42%. As it is understood during the transition phase, uh, unemployment will hit a record high in my region and the danger of uh, desertification lags. Our youth is fleeing Western Macedonia in order to work in their area of expertise. Another challenge is the mines and the exploited land recovery and the repurposing in combination with a lack of land for investments that can create long-term jobs. This will take years and time is a luxury for us. Due to developed electricity distribution networks and the obsolete spatial plan for renewables, there is limitless installation of photovoltaics and wind generators that not, not only do not create any jobs, but also occupy land ideal for agricultural, livestock or industrial use. One of our most important assets is our human resource with the, the wide knowledge on power and energy related working areas. With reskilling and upskilling them, they can be recruited for jobs in the green energy and technology industry. Because of the human resource and the energy focused mentality of ours as, as region, together with the most important European energy companies, 
we have submitted a considerable proposal to the IPCI for hydrogen. It concerns green hydrogen production to use for electricity, but also for energy storage, district heating and pipeline distribution located in Western Macedonia. Honorable Executive Vice President Timmermans, I think that there is no need to say how important your help and cooperation is for my region and for our future. Every aspect of transition presented by us today must be taken into consideration during the continuous design and implementation of the Just Transition Fund. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, over to our second speaker, um, Barbara Botos, the Deputy State Secretary in charge of Just Transition in Hungary. You also have two minutes, please. Go ahead. Thank you so much. Just agreeing with what uh, Mr. Vice President said. Yes, it's very important to uh, to meet the, as well local needs and to reach out. We have been working on the Life Integrated Project for two years with 22 consortium members, including through two huge trade unions. And yes, we reached out to local stakeholders and they identified we need to go for solar industry, for pumped hydro hydroelectric energy storage, for hydrogen industry, for aquaculture, for building insulation material production and tourism could be also a way out for them. It affects 2,100 people linked to the lignite plant, 5,000 companies closely linked to this sector, and also 1,000 more companies who are subcontractors lignite, uh, to, to the lignite sector. We have to find their place. But first, we need to replace these lignite capacities with renewable and low carbon technologies, which is, of course, not the subject of the Just Transition Fund. However, without this, the transition is not meaningful. And after that, it's important to support related businesses in green economic diversification. It is important that all direct and indirect workers have secure employment. This cannot be ensured only by energy projects, but new green economic investments, which play a very important role. So just to sum up, uh, existing subcontractors and suppliers can and should be linked to the new green economy investments and have a role in should have a role in the new supply chains. Uh, and also, when we are talking about recultivation in Hungary, for example, we have to uh, give the approximately 3000 uh, acres of mine and industrial land for new functions to be filled in. That's why in the light integrated project and also in the just transition plan, plan we focus on green economic diversification technological change, promotion of research and development and innovation, and encouraging the development of renewable energy infrastructure, green public transport developments, and sustainable repurposing of mining sites. So this is the whole aim, and we do believe by setting up and launching energy community projects, by setting example how to phase out lignite burning in households, and by repurposing mining uh, sites, we can find new green economic opportunities in these most affected areas, and we can certainly have an impact on secondary Thank you so much, and Ms. Votos. Okay, over to our next speaker, Zdenik Karasik, the Deputy for Just Transition in Morovia, Dilijon in the Czech Republic. You have two minutes also. Please go ahead. Okay, so we have two main challenges in our transition process. Uh, the first one is uh, brain drain. We want to stop uh, this trend and change it to brain gain. And we want to do it through three A's. So one is attractive education. Second one is attractive job and business opportunities. And the third one, uh, attractive environment. Uh, the second main challenge is uh, image of coal and steel region in structural problems. We want to uh, come back to the position of the second growth pole of the Czech Republic. The, first one behind Prague, and we want to do this in the next uh, 10 years. Uh, with regard to assets which uh, we build on and uh, which we have, uh, we have, let's say, five major ones. The first one is culture of people, uh, because there is a mindset of uh, patriotism and, uh, let's say, we can say work hard, play hard uh, culture of, of these people. The second uh, asset is uh, experience and tangible examples of uh, success stories in transformation in the last uh, 30 years. Uh, the third one is uh, continuity of governance, because since 2016, 
to at least 2024 there will be a similar political coalition which uh, leads this process. Uh, the fourth one is uh, growing attraction of our region for investors, uh, bringing higher added value, research and development. And the last uh, one, but not least, is growing number of regional SMEs uh, which are successful uh, on the global markets. Uh, for example, uh, in orthoprothetic uh, in United States and uh, in other other sectors as well. So. These are Thank our you, major Sammy. assets. Fantastic. Okay, so over okay. to the Executive Vice President, Mr. Timmons, quickly um, for his thoughts. Well, uh, you know, a lot is, is linked to um, uh, new jobs for people with new skills. Uh, I, I see that coming back a lot. And this will have to be in our, in our focus a lot with all the interested uh, parties. The second uh, issue which I picked up from what you said is you know, it's okay to uh, exit out of mining, um, but then you have to have alternative energy resourcing. Uh, uh, so, so that that is absolutely true. That if if we want, uh, the, we see we saw it in the energy crisis. If they have no alternative, they will want more coal or more gas. Uh, so we need to speed up our transition to renewable energy generation. There's a lot of jobs in renewable energy generation. Um, uh, both uh, offshore wind, on land wind, and especially also solar, and everything linked to that, uh, leading also to uh, battery storage and hydrogen storage. So, I believe that this is, you know, this energy transition per se is also a creator of new new jobs. Then, um, this work hard, play hard, uh, 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 Mr. Karasek uh, men mentioned. Um, I can relate to that. I'm from a coal mining region myself. This is really very much the mentality of people in coal mining regions. But, and this is our experience, if you don't give them a new opportunity to work hard and you think you can ease them out of coal with social security or things like that, they will also lose the love of playing hard. It is a combination. You need to give regions an economic opportunity. Uh, uh, that will not be solved with Social Security. Of course, you need Social Security as a backup, but the only thing that works is work. Uh, and I believe this is extremely important because we have a different experience in my home region. And, you know, this is 50 years ago. I mean, you still suffer the consequences half a century later. So we have to be extremely careful when we uh, um, uh, help regions that we concentrate first and foremost on economic activity that is accessible to the people living there. So, because coal mining, of course, you have coal miners who do the digging, but it's also high tech. Coal mining also always had high tech involved. You have the engineers, you have the people who do all the calculations, you have the logistics, you have all the means linked to that. I don't need to explain that to you, but this is something that needs to be uh, 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 widely understood, and you need to replace opportunity for all those sectors. Uh, and preventing brain drain is absolutely one of them. My region suffered terrible brain drain, and you never really recover from it if you let it happen. So there, I, I would be exactly on the same uh, uh, line as Mr. Karasek said uh, on behalf of his region. Okay. So our next round of speakers. Reminder: the question is, what are the challenges? And the assets in your region to promote economic renewal and make a just transition success. All of you will only have one minute, and I will absolutely now cut you off. So don't let it get to 30 seconds, otherwise, you won't be able to speak. Okay, so let's go to Mr. Yizabran Rizabal, the Vice Governor of the Province of Groningen. You have just one minute, please, sir. Thank you. I believe that the real success of our strategy is that we focus on broad prosperity and listen well to our stakeholders. We build on what we have and we do it together. As CARES region, we look for alternatives for our industry and for our working population. For example, to green hydrogen. We want to improve the situation of our regional community, both citizens and businesses. And we took that into account when we draft it on our just transition plan.
Dus we looked to set off interventions. I will give you a few examples. We help small and medium businesses to make their production process more sustainable. In the process industry, we make measures to electrify instead of using gas. We support smart coalitions, frequently cross-sectorial. We make it all to a success. We invest in training, educate, and reskill our workforce. We invest in our future generation by investing in their education and coach them into the green and a good future. Well, the last. The better idea is to visit our region and come and see it yourself. We in Groningen are known not for talking much, but to take action and work together to move forward. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Okay, to Mr. Uh, Michele Emiliano, the president of Puglia region in Italy. You have one minute. Please go ahead. Allora, so eh, Taranto è una delle città eh, più belle della Puglia, contendeva ad Alessandra d'Egitto il primato come città della cultura, della bellezza, dello sport nelle Olimpiadi dell'antica Grecia, era una colonia spartana, adesso vogliamo lavorare restituendo eh, e facendo crescere la qualità dei lavoratori, ristrutturando eh, la loro professionalità, questo può avvenire con i centri di ricerca che stiamo progettando nelle scienze della vita e delle biotecnologie, il tecnopolo medico sul territorio salentino si connetterà a Taranto, produrre energia da fonti rinnovabili, in, innovare nel settore dell'ICT che dovremo sviluppare in modo particolare per la eh, cyber security e per l'intelligenza artificiale, economia circolare, L'agritech, perché eh, Taranto ha un potenziale straordinario dal punto di vista agricolo, e soprattutto eh, turismo, perché la Hydrogen Valley che vogliamo realizzare a Taranto è l'equivalente eh, di ciò che l'intera umanità deve realizzare nel futuro. Tutto questo è pronto. Il Politecnico di Bari, l'Università di Bari, lavorano sulla formazione del capitale umano per attuare la rivoluzione di Taranto. Grazie. Thank you so much. Okay, to so, Daniel okay, Lecky, Vice President okay. in Charge of European Affairs at the Haute de France in France. You have one minute. Please go ahead. Oui, alors, pour prolonger mon propos de tout à l'heure et les défis que nous avons relevés, la région de france je vous l'ai dit, a travaillé de manière très active à son, sa troisième révolution industrielle et l'ambition ou l'enjeu, c'est véritablement de faire travailler l'ensemble des filières ensemble de manière horizontale et verticale pour accompagner une réelle mutation de l'ensemble de notre économie régionale. Et cela implique évidemment d'investir dans la recherche, dans l'innovation et dans le développement d'un certain nombre de nouvelles techniques, pratiques de production fondées à la fois sur l'éco-conception et sur un certain nombre d'éléments qui permettent de réduire l'impact environnemental de notre, de notre industrie et de notre économie régionale. Ce changement de modèle, qui est un changement profond, qui est global, eh bien, implique naturellement que nous ayons une réflexion d'ensemble et cette réflexion d'ensemble doit se mener en relation avec les populations. On l'a dit tous au long de cet échange, il y a un enjeu majeur en matière d'accompagnement des populations, donc de formation des demandeurs d'emploi et de celles et ceux qui vont être touchés par cette transition. Il faut que nous puissions former ces nouveaux métiers et nous avons la chance en région Hauts-de-France de disposer d'un écosystème de formation, d'accompagnement des demandeurs d'emploi qui est euh, fort, qui est important et qui fait partie de nos priorités euh, régionales. Encore une fois, cette culture industrielle qui a fait la force des Hauts-de-France, nous voulons aujourd'hui la convertir à cette exigence environnementale qui est une absolue nécessité pour euh, permettre le développement de notre région. Thank you so much. Okay, over to Mr. Risto the Deputy Regional Mayor of the Regional Council of North Karelia in Finland. You have one minute also. Please go ahead. So thank you. We have uh, two main challenges and, and one of our challenges is this our northern locations, past population and, and climate conditions. So we have a long and cold winter. So, so we don't have it reflects to our energy choices. We don't have 
many alternatives for for energy use and that is i come up to the question was mr timmer raised up so we need uh, r and we need to solutions uh, we do have bioenergy biomass solar power and wind, wind power but we also need this hydrogen and geothermal options so it's uh, one of these challenges another one is this location of peatlands and and the demographics of these areas which are used for for energy and we have also the the, the, the uh, how this this brain drain is is going to up but what is the our results and the assets i think we have the actors good structures to deliver development economies science parks startup actions good cooperation structures but also the r and d structures and this high tech solution is possible to create via these kind of actions but finally uh, via this funding we have the possibility to support this uh, transition. Thank you. Okay, um, Executive Vice President, I'm not going to come to you just now. We're going to we're going to go through the the the, the final um, um, speakers, and then you can comment after that. Okay, so over to Maciej Sitek from the Pleni Century of the Board of Wielkopolska Region for the Reconstruction of Eastern Wielkopolska Poland. You have uh, one minute. Please go ahead. Dziękuję bardzo. Jeżeli chodzi o jeżeli chodzi o Wielkopolsce, to właściwie największe wyzwanie jest przed nami. Mamy świetny plan, mamy wiemy, co chcemy zrobić, musimy to zrealizować. Myślę, że wszyscy dokładnie jesteśmy w tym samej sytuacji. To, że nakreślimy pewne plany, to jest podstawa. To, co dla nas było największym wyzwaniem, dwa obszary, czyli z jednej strony wsparcie dla pracowników i znalezienie dla nich alternatywy i z drugiej strony to jest kwestia środowiska i zadbania, dlatego że węgiel brunatny, wydobywanie węgla brunatnego niszczy strasznie środowisko i to powoduje, że mamy z tym ogromne wyzwanie. To, co nas wyróżnia i to, co jest naszym atutem, to jest współpraca e, interesariuszy. E, wszyscy są zaangażowani. NGOsy, e, związki zawodowe, e, bardzo duża e, działalność jak gdyby tych interesariuszy i to jest niezwykle ważne i myślę, że dla wszystkich. Otwarty, bardzo mocno e, transparentny proces e, w, e, działania. I drugi element, który uważam, że jest ważny, e, to także e, współpraca międzynarodowa zgadzam się z panem Schmidtem, że ta współpraca z, z regionami, które już przeszły i uczenie się od nich jest jednym z najważniejszych rzeczy, które możemy wyciągnąć z lekcji. I tutaj Platforma Sprawiedliwej Transformacji jest niezwykle pomocna to, żeby być międzynarodowo i działać. Dziękuję. Thank you so much. Okay, to Thomas Gottfried Schmidt, the Minister for Regional Development in the Free State of Saxony, Germany. You have one minute. Please go ahead. Ja, ich möchte mich auch ganz kurz fassen. Erstens müssen wir klar definieren, welche Potenziale sind in der Region überhaupt schon da. Also in unserer Region Automobilbau, Fahrzeugbau, Mikroelektronik und weiteres. Was müssen wir für Probleme lösen? Das ist einmal neben der Energiewende natürlich Themen wie Recycling, Leichtbau. Implementierung neuer Technologien wie künstliche Intelligenz. Wie können wir Netzwerke schaffen zwischen der Forschung, zwischen der Wirtschaft, zwischen der Verwaltung und das alles noch grenzübergreifend denken? Dritten, äh, weiterhin, äh, die, welche Erfahrungen haben wir, auf, wel, auf die wir aufbauen können in Transformationsprozessen, auch mit europäischen Programmen wie, wie LIDER, wie EFRE, wie INTEREC und wie können wir Hemmnisse abbauen, die beim JDF sicherlich auch widerstehen, wie Beihilferecht, Wettbewerbsrecht, um die Ungeduld der Leute schnell Ergebnisse sehen, auch zu befriedigen. Und, und letztes, letzter Punkt, die Lebensqualität in den Regionen muss gesichert und muss erhöht werden. Vielen Dank. Thank you so much. Okay, and then to our last speaker, Mr. Juan Cafino Gonzalez, the Vice President of the Principado of Asturias. You have um, one minute. Please go ahead. Sí, eh, y de forma telegráfica eh, yo quiero poner el foco no tanto en, en los desafíos de la región como en, en los desafíos colectivos, como comunidad, ¿no? telegráficamente. Nosotros pensamos que se deben remover las reglas generales de la Unión Europea en materia de política macroeconómica, todo ello para que y reglas de gasto público para que la transición funcione correctamente. ¿no? Eh, eso por una parte. 
al menos para las eh, regiones en, en transición, los que estamos hablando aquí, ¿no? Creemos que también hay que poner el foco en las ayudas de Estado, porque eso hay que resetear esa situación. También pensamos que es necesario eh, instaurar mecanismos de ajuste de carbono en fronteras. Sé que la Comisión Europea, sabemos que la Comisión Europea está en ello. También tenemos que analizar el actual sistema de comercio de derechos de emisión para evitar, procurar una competencia libre y evitar procesos especulativos. En definitiva, ahí queremos poner el foco. Con respecto a, a, a la región y a las fortalezas, pues pensamos que eh, nosotros eh, estamos fuertes en los procesos de concertación social, hemos conseguido un pacto social en la región para la transición justa y creemos que la propia estructura económica e industrial de Asturias, con un sector industrial con trabajadores muy cualificados, dos campus universitarios, de base tecnológica y una adecuada relación entre todos los sectores económicos fortalecen, son los puntos fuertes de la región. Quiero concluir con un apunte final y es que, eh, como saben, en la próxima edición del diálogo político de esta mesa, que en principio se celebrará en Asturias, si el COVID-19 y la enfermedad nos permite hacerla presencialmente, quería aprovechar para invitarles a todos ustedes a viajar a Asturias y muy especialmente al vicepresidente de la Comisión, al señor Franz Timmermans. Nada más y muchísimas gracias. Okay, so Executive Vice President, you were invited there. Um, so what are your thoughts then on, on, on what you've heard from all of these um, regions? Well, let me say I'm, I'm leaving for Spain tonight, but I'm not going to Asturias. Uh, I'll, I'll be in, in, in Madrid and in the Basque country in the coming days. But there's, I'm sure there's going to be another opportunity to come to all of your regions. And by the way, Mr. Reisbol, I've been to Groningen quite a lot. <laughs> So it wouldn't be uh, new uh, for me. Uh, well, what I retain from from your comments, just just a couple of just a couple of thoughts. Um, um, I like the idea of approaching it from a broad perspective on what is prosperity. How do you bring prosperity to a region? What elements do you need for that? And in that context, I would uh, point to also to the need of having. Um, good infrastructure, which is something that most of your regions already have to start with because of your economic structure, but which is not always infrastructure for the future. Uh, do you have broadband everywhere? No. That is the infrastructure of the future. Uh, do you have high-speed trains everywhere? No. That's the infrastructure of uh, the future. Um, Uh, I think Puglia, the, the big difference for Puglia will be when this high-speed train that was now promised is going to get there. Um, um, uh, because um, we've seen in the past that people who make calculations for high-speed trains always underestimate the economic effect of a high-speed train uh, 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 being... Uh, so uh, this is my, my first comment. Let's also have an integrated look at the infrastructure needs, not of today, but of 10, 15, 20 years from now, and how this could disclose, how it could open up uh, regions to approach it through this idea of broad uh, 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 Second comment. It is, we are going through a um, paradigm change, uh, a tectonic change. This is an industrial revolution we're in, not because of climate change only, not because of the biodiversity crisis only, also because of the industrial revolution. Digitization is uh, going not to speed up uh, 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 gradually, but exponentially. And this is changing the very basis of our economies on a global scale very quickly. And anticipating that change and investing in economies that are part of that change is, I think, the best opportunity for just a transition uh, 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 regions, including, of course, incorporating all of this into the uh, skilling and reskilling of workforce, which seems to be in the subject coming back in all uh, the... Uh... So, um, uh, if you... Many of uh, the regions we're talking to are not centrally placed in the member states, but very often centrally placed in Europe or connected to other parts of Europe. So also trans-border infrastructure is extremely important in that context. Uh, this is also something we, we need uh, to work on. Um, some of you uh, mentioned the quality of living, the quality of life. 
And uh, what is sometimes underestimated or doesn't really make part of the discussion is that exiting out of coal and lignite just saves lives. You know, uh, in this day and age, uh, in Europe, every year, 400,000 people, 400,000 people die prematurely because of air pollution. Pollution caused uh, uh, by uh, coal, by uh, oil, by our transport modes. So exiting out of coal, um, going for zero emission uh, transport, etc., is going to save lives and it's going to produce cleaner air, cleaner circumstances. You know, I, I remember that's one of the things I remember as a child when the coal mines were closed in my home region, that all of a sudden the air was so much better. When my, when my, when my uh, mother or my grandmother did the laundry, the laundry, the, the sheets didn't get black on certain days when they were hanging outside with all the dust that were, was in the air. So we tend to forget these things, but these are also, in terms of quality of life, huge uh, contributions. If you combine that with the quality of jobs, then you really get an impulse of quality uh, uh, of life. And I have to insist on the issue of jobs uh, because it's not any old jobs. It is jobs with certain skills that produce sufficient salaries because one of the bottlenecks we have in mining is that it's, it's let's call them blue collar jobs with higher salaries. And for coal mine, that's one of the reasons why my grandfathers stuck to coal mining, because there's nowhere else they could make that much money. Not that they liked being, they were proud of being coal miners, but they also saw the danger. I lost an uncle in a coal mining accident. So um, we need to make sure that if we skill and reskill people working in the coal mining industry, we give them an opportunity to get a job that gets them comparable pay, what they are used to, because otherwise it won't work. So that's also a part of the choice you make for your economic uh, mix in uh, the region. Um, international cooperation is essential. Did you know that Poland is now the biggest exporter of electric buses in Europe? Nobody knows that. Everybody thinks that Poland has a bigger, bigger challenge than anybody else. Yes, in some area it does, but it also changes quicker than anywhere else. Uh, so, you know... And through international cooperation, we can bring this to all regions in Europe. It's a matter of looking not at member states, but at regions, also between regions, looking at regions, as uh, the representatives from Saxon uh, just said uh, as well. Um, let me stop here. Uh, I, my door is always open for cooperation directly with you. Uh, our services are, are at your uh, disposal if you have questions or if you want to see cooperation. We have uh, one thing we need to do, and that is to make a success out of this and to create enough optimism in our citizens that they will embrace change. Because if they are not optimistic enough, they would rather stick with the misery they're in than with the misery they expect. So we have to make sure that we give them a future that they can believe in, and then they will set the steps, even taking risks, they will set the steps into that future. And your role, because they believe you more than anybody else because you're close to them, your role in this is crucial. Wherever I can support you in that role, I will be at your disposal. Closing um, our closing session itself. Okay, well, a big thank you, of course, to all of our regional representatives. Thank you so much for sharing all of your ideas about your sustainable transport. Hope also that everyone who has been joining online has um, enjoyed this high-level uh, roundtable for the fourth edition of the Just Trans meeting. I'm Mariam Zaidi, and it's been my pleasure to host the discussion from myself and the Executive Vice of the European Commission, Mr. Francis Simmons. Uh, take care and bye-bye.